everyone happy to be speaking to you today about uh, caching on ipfs really like all the caching uh this talk will be backed by our journey at tag house while we we're building the dot storage products uh, that you know as nft dot storage and web3 dot storage so uh yeah talk really about caching a lot of caching multiple caching layers uh and angles uh so yeah i was uh, the dot storage products journey so far it was really great we had a lot of caching um, so yeah, we have been building and maintaining uh, these products for over a year now. We had expected growth pains over time, uh, as expected, especially when you build a product in a really small time frame. As you can see in these Grafana dashboards, we have like over, it's a bit outdated, but we have over 100 million uploads so far. Um, one of the big pain points for users over time was always uh, retrieval. Like retrieval was not reliable. Retrieval was quite slow, and when you expect people to build on top of our technology, you can't expect that you have this NFT marketplace. They open their website, and they don't even are able to retrieve NFTs. So yeah, we need to do something about it. And uh, one of the things that we thought in the beginning, yeah, what about uh, CDN caching? How it can help? Uh, so yeah, like uh, you should already be familiar with CDN caching. I'm not going deep into that. I will focus more on what were the concepts that were nice for our use case. So focusing more on uh, first user experience, uh, of course, like really fast content retrieval and also uh, reliability. While previously with IPFS.io, sometimes uh, like Alan's uh, talk previously, uh, it might take a while, but it's not like constant. So uh, we want something that uh, is, has predictable performance. So into the network slash infrastructure <laughs> side of things, uh, we want to cut down on bandwidth costs so caching, less, less need to uh, overload the public gateways in the IPFS network, and uh, also uh, just out of the box geodispersed content uh, delivery network. So why is CDN a really a great, cache, a great fit for um, IPFS? Like, uh, so as you know, location addressable content can't mutate anytime, which makes like, uh, okay, you can cache the content, but you might need to check it and validate that it's still the valid content. Uh, you need to also take a good configuration on all the cache control and guarantee that you might not serve outdated content. While in IPFS, everything is immutable thanks to its nature. So it's really an excellent fit. We can just cache and uh, cache the maximum amount of time because by the end of the day, all the IPFS HTTP URLs will return the same response. So yeah, uh, with this, I want to present you uh, our Edge Gateway. This was our first uh, iteration kind of proof of concept which we built specifically for NFT storage. Uh, we call it uh, NFT storage.ling. So it's essentially, it's not a typical IPFS gateway as you know it, but a CDN on top of it. Uh, so it is kind of uh, uh, essentially built and deployed on Cloudflare workers. It's just, and they have just hundreds of data centers. So it will be, you will have one near your house all the time and things will be fast. Uh, so yeah, uh, essentially what happens is we receive IPFS, uh, IPFS request, like uh, either a subdomain or IPFS path resolution. And uh, uh, at first we'll go through our multiple caching layers. I will go into them in a bit, but uh, for now just, if it's not cached, we'll do a, a race between multiple uh, gateways. So we have IPFS or IO, uh, we have a dedicated Cloudflare gateway and also a, a dedicated Pinata gateway. Uh, we just raise all of them at the same time. The first one that responds back is the one, the response that we proxy and just give back to the user. Uh, yeah, with this, we can uh, offer a more reliable solution. We have multiple ways of getting the content from and also uh, more performance because like we can just give the fastest response instead of uh, uh, having the user just go to one gateway and wait for it to, to respond. So yeah, zooming into the actual edge gateway and all the caching things. Uh, first, uh, uh, we just get for free the Cloudflare cache uh, server, uh, the uh, HTTP server cache, uh, and uh, which even before just the code, get to our code, we'll immediately have a lot of things cached. Uh, in case uh, we need to actually go to the Cloudflare workers uh, part of things, of course, we first have the denial list just to make sure that we don't serve bad content. It is synced with uh, uh, bad, bad bits which of course adds a bit of uh, extra latency, but that is needed. Otherwise, we'll be end up to, uh, blocked by Google or other security vendors like we have been in the past. 
Um, so yeah, lots of knowledge of uh, operating uh, kind of a gateway, even though it's not really a gateway. Uh, yeah, so um, our first layer of resolution, uh, it's divided into two parts. Uh, both are uh, CDN caching, and uh, we basically do both in parallel and respond to the first one that we get. So we essentially uh, rely on a Cloudflare cache API, which is an LRU cache recently used. Uh, and if you just got the uh, request for, and we uh, save the response there, it's just really fast and we can get it back. But we also uh, shipped SuperRot recently. It is basically a premium permacache where, okay, you want your content to be cached all the time. You, want, you don't want to rely on it to be popular and always in the cache API. So you just want to also have it permacached everywhere. We have this premium feature in our read pipeline. Uh, so yeah, if it's not cached, as I mentioned, we just do the uh, gateway race. Uh, just a glimpse on, on metrics. Um, our cache plus race, of course, makes it, uh, it considerably faster than uh, any individual public gateways. Um, as you can see in some metrics here, we are at least four times faster than public gateways. Sometimes like we get to kind of 10 times. It depends really on the day and the type of content that we are getting, to, like if it's already cached or not. So it's not super predictable, even though like as you see, like for the 95th percentile uh, response time here for this instant of my screenshot, we have uh, a bit over 100 uh, milliseconds, 115. Uh, in terms of cache sheets, uh, the first part, the HTTP server cache, we have kind of 40%. It sometimes drops, it sometimes gets a bit, uh, a bit upper. And in terms of uh, the work when it gets to the cache API or to the super hot, we get still another 60% from the remaining 60 or 55% we, we get there. So essentially, this makes this thing really, really fast. Uh, we have a lot of other metrics, uh, comparisons with all the gateways we track, like, all the, the requests that we do to any single uh, public gateway and we can like uh, uh, get all the metrics if you want to talk about them and look into them. I am happy to share with you that later on, uh, but I didn't want to go too into deep into this. So yeah, what's next? Uh, maybe maybe some more caching, right? Uh, yeah, uh, so NFT storage link has been uh, uh, quite a big success so far. Users are really happy about it. So now we are reframing uh, NFT storage juggling, this proof of concept that we did to be kind of part of all the reads pipeline of the dot storage products and not specific to one product. Uh, so for this, we, are, uh, we have been relying on a lot of uh, uh, beta features from Cloudflare and uh, they shipped this new feature called uh, worker bindings, which is still beta. And we are using this to basically uh, look into building W3S.link and that, but at the same time, make uh, infrastructure that we are not just operating two different things, maintaining all the different code. So yeah, so the, um, the goals are we want to offer the same uh, uh, excellent to trivial experience that MC Storage.link has. We want to have a CDN LRU cache for both products scoped for each other so that they just have their initial caching layer uh, specific to each product. But we also want to have a common dot, dot storage caching layer that if it's the first cache layer is not it, we can still have more and like shared cache between uh, these two products and eventually more in the future. Um, so yeah, as I said, we don't want to maintain two full gateway implementations. We just want to maintain most of the code in one place. And uh, we also want to iterate on all the learnings that we had building our first gateway. Uh, so try to not bet get blocked uh, by Google and other security vendors. Uh, so yeah, we already know some things. There are some risks on uh, shipping a new domain. We are all aware of them. And uh, we are working on getting uh, hopefully not blocked this time. Uh, so yeah, uh, two different domains, W3S.link and FSRs.link. This essentially gives us out of the box two different scoped LRU caches uh, within uh, each Cloudflare zone. Um, then uh, uh, we rely on the, the worker bindings that I said to you, where basically all the kind of uh, codes, there is the gateway part, lives. Uh, it's used for both products even though like in the future we might want to have uh, this specific feature for one product or for the other one. So we can just easily just add specific uh, logic for each product in each gateway. Um, yeah, so um, that's this here. And now um, one more, like the last bit of caching I have for you today. Uh, let's talk about Claudio. Uh, this is the new cache thing Alan and I have been hacking around recently. Uh, this, you can think of this by reframing what we did with uh, gateways and caching to bit swap and caching. 
Um, <laughs> yes, yes, things change so so fast. So yeah, um, um, you will listen uh, later about uh, uh, Elastic IPFS. Also, some motivations for this comes from there. Essentially, egress uh, is almost always free in Cloudflare, as opposed to AWS, where we are currently in um, with the Elastic IPFS, where egress is really expensive. So. Uh, as we move into having uh, Elastic IPFS as part of our uh, pipeline, we are looking into ways of both having a really good uh, retrieval experience, but also re reduce the costs of uh, uh, getting uh, data out of the of the network. So yeah, Claudio, uh, Claudio is essentially a lipid P node running uh, within once again like Cloudflare workers. We really like Cloudflare <laughs> in uh, our Roots pipeline. So it essentially is a long-lived uh, worker that exposes a WebSocket port, and uh, essentially uh, any IPFS or lipid P node can just dial us. Uh, once we get a, a connection into WebSocket, we just have a custom uh, uh, WebSocket transport that Alan wrote where basically we can just upgrade the raw WebSocket connection to a LibitP connection with all the security and multiplexing negotiation that LibitP then offers us for free. Then uh, uh, LibitP Identify protocol kicks in. We add our kind of minimal implementation of BitSwap, which is basically a fork of uh, Elastic IPFS uh, BitSwap with some tweaks, which basically means we use another Cloudflare-backed thing called Minibus, uh, where basically you can think of Minibus as a block store in the edge, where we can just have uh, R2 buckets with blocks stored by multi-hash, so that they can also, multiple CIDs can just point to the same block. Uh, and also, like as a different worker thing, we can also have another caching layer just to get blocks even before going to to R2. So yeah, the flow is uh, dial from any nodes to Claudio, establish a bit swap stream between the nodes, and then we just receive uh, uh, messages from bit swap saying, yeah, I want this this block, and we just go to do a minibus and get it. In the future, like we will probably look into having a, a full bit swap implementation or looking into other things. Uh, this is just a, a really a proof of concept that we did in like a week or so. So yeah, uh, let's do let's do a demo, uh, a live demo to be more fun. Uh, can I get my terminal this side? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, I might need to. So uh, I will just uh, put the logs on for you to be able to see stuff. So we have on the top Claudio uh, worker running minibus. I'm running a GSIPFS daemon as well. Um, I have here on the top left, uh, basically just I will put uh, um, a block with, with this string of content into Minibus so that then we can get it from uh, Claudium. So uh, we can just post into it, yeah it worked, we have the multi hash of that content. Oh. My neck will not like me for this. <laughs> so yeah, um, you can see here. Uh, so first, uh, swarm peers for our node, no peers. We can try to, oh no, first we need, yeah, we need to do this uh, conversion. Uh, we don't still know yet, we didn't look into, but we do, we can't do use JSIPFS to get uh, multi-hash. Uh, so we need to kind of transform it into a CID. Um, we don't not show it yet why, but that's a different story. So yeah, uh, if we try to uh, get uh, block uh, get uh, and I try to get it, of course I won't be able to get it. I'm not even connected to Claudio. So uh, if we try to connect, uh, swarm connect, yes. Uh, okay, now we are connected to Claudio. Now if we now you you will see. Once I get the, I, we get the post, I forgot to tell you about when I posted from uh, uh, that side to Minibus. Mm -hmm. Now, when I will try to get from JSIPFS, you will see that Minibus will be contacted. So yeah, give me your blog. So JSIPFS blog get, uh, will you give me that blog? Get, yes. Uh, so, so we have IPFS thing, uh, uh, column 22. So yeah. 
that was that was it um let's go back into the slides uh okay uh oh my okay so yeah cloud one lock says uh, a lot of opportunities we will still discuss this week a bunch of like what are the use cases that we want to try to unlock with this some things we can just place it in front of elastic ipfs uh, which would basically give us CDN caching for the blocks requested from the IPFS network. Uh, we can get more fancy and kind of uh, do kind of a, a protocol, a LibreTV protocol, kind of something like circuit relay, but for proxying content as well, if we want to, to get more fancy about LibreTV. Uh, with that, we can also just uh, create a, a full bit swap implementation and actually go to, um, to the network and try to re resolve blocks. Or we can just also proactive uh, do block caching when, for example, we get a root CID request, we can go into carv2 indexes that we store and just uh, get everything cached before the, the follow-up requests come in. So yeah, that's all from me. Do we have any questions, uh, comments, suggestions? <laughs> Alex. Well, this calls the other day, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, I mean, how fast do you like, it raises a bunch. So mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so one of the things that also made us go into the worker bindings architecture with multiple services was that, like, the the this piece on the right that uh, that I previously had. Uh, this could in theory be kind of dweb.link. Uh, so in theory, like we have it here, IPFS RIO, which is an ally to dweb.link, but it could even move here with this as dweb.link, and then we could also use it as part of the race, and we'd have even more caching layers on top. Uh, yeah, like uh, we, want, we are building this in a way that then uh, uh, dweb.link could, could use it. Uh, Thibaut? Um, so, given its base, like data workers and time and like web workers or service workers, to what extent could this work could also benefit, like, and having service workers on the client that could also cash, like, we provide a bit swap for that for various websites? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I think it, that would also work. We actually, we had our uh, team retreat uh, a few months ago and we act uh, some stuff around that. The Actually, the motivation was more around the, uh, um, not getting blocked because you could just do local requests to the service worker and then from the service worker to just to our stuff and like of course indirectly we would have more cash as well so yeah we have been uh, hacking on that kind of stuff it's still not uh, reached out as a priority for us because we also know that uh, uh, running a service worker is sometimes a pain for users and then you can't have two service workers at the same time uh, it's really difficult to distribute anyway might be something that we'll look into the future Maeve? Um, how does this play with IPFS? Do you just like not cache IPFS paths or is there anything else? Uh, yeah, so like uh, so paths or is there anything else? Yeah, so for now uh, our, our strategy for IPFS is quite simple we just redirect to the web.link <laughs> but uh, uh, at some point we will integrate with the W3 name and we would uh, resolve from the W3 name. So also in that case, probably the approach you have to deal with cache and allocation. Uh, W3 name ends up being the cache <laughs> already. Well, yeah, so W3 name would be the cache for the IPNS records. But then once the IPNS record is resolved to a static identifier, then mm -hmm. we would check still the same cache as that. Exactly. Can you talk to me a little bit about the different implications of what, how the different layers of cache and how the different helps in different open spaces? Um, yeah, so... Um, why specifically will the bit swap cache, for example, versus this other kind of caching part here? Mm -hmm. So uh, here it's like all about uh, um, gateway uh, requests. So basically... Uh, the different cache, so the first like scope by products because like each uh, Cloudflare domain has like this size of Alaru cache, so we want more uh, size, so this means we can have more uh, Alaru caches per product. Uh, we also have the, the perma cache for people that are just not fancy enough to 
uh, to just rely on maybe it will be cached like highly likely you just went all the time but then in the bit swap part it's also like what if requests are not even coming to the gateway but you are just running your own ipfs node uh, and you want to bit swap the content we would just serve uh, stuff from elastic ipfs uh, which will be like uh, more expensive in terms of egress but we can just put this other bit swap cache on top to make things faster and uh, cheaper also, like the majority of our risk loss requests are other gateways and our gateway asking. Exactly. So, so get the stuff 